welcome to flight training. I'm your instructor, Captain Molina. But hey, Molina. You can just call me Jess. Hey, Jess. This session, we'll get started with some basic controls. Sound good? Sounds great. First things first, let's get familiar with your surroundings. Don't worry. I've got the stick while you get your bearings. Out your side windows, you can see we have great visibility over Sedona today. Yes. Oh, God. Control left. This is Red Rock territory. Beautiful, isn't it? Yes. Very. Quite a few stutters there. I think something didn't work. Control Alt One. See if you can spot oh, the Sedona Airport. The runway should be a pretty easy landmark to find. There you go. Visual confirmation on the airport. Now that we're oriented, it's your turn. Time to fly this bird. Okay, so. The first control on our training list is the yoke. I still remember my first instructor saying the yoke is like a steering wheel. Thanks, h -Zone. Sure, you can turn, but you can also pitch. For starters, it controls the ailerons. And the ailerons, they allow the plane to roll and bank into turns. Go ahead and try rolling to the right. Is that not enough right for you? Nice. Thank you. Now let's see you level back out. Good. Of course, the yoke also controls the elevator. And the elevator affects the plane's pitch, right? Pull back on the stick, the plane starts to climb. Give it a shot. The most valuable things in aviation are speed and altitude. But notice, when you're pitching up, your speed is decreasing. You could add more power. Or for now, let's just pitch down. Like that, your speed's picking up again as the nose pitches down. As you level back out, let's talk about another control the rudders at your feet. Rudder pedals control the aircraft's side to side movement, also known as yaw. On the ground, those pedals are going to steer the plane left or right. Up here, they properly align us during turns. Try them out, and watch the plane's nose skew to either side. Simple enough, right? Before we go on, let's bring the plane back to straight up flight. Make sure your dashboard is aligned three to four inches below the horizon for a cruise attitude. Okay, the last thing we're gonna cover now is the throttle. If you have the need for speed, then the throttle's for you. Full control over the power output of the engine. Let's see what happens when you cut all the power. Surprise, surprise! Our altitude is decreasing. Yep. This might be a good time for a piloting PSA. Uh -huh. Always keep an eye on your surroundings because nobody likes a low-flying duck. All right, let's go ahead and throttle back up. Mm. 
nearly 25,000 RPM. It is increasing, and as long as we maintain the same attitude, our altitude will keep climbing too. You're really getting the hang of your controls. Before long, you won't even need a co-pilot. Until then, if you want help with the radio or checklists or simply flying the plane, I'll be here. You can pass me the controls when you're ready to finish your session, or keep flying. It is a great day after all. All right, I have control. Good job. So, it's very difficult to talk over her when she's trying to instruct me, but one thing she never mentions throughout the whole thing is that we're at a high altitude. And when you're at a high altitude, the air is thinner, so you do need to thin the mixture. Now, okay, it was totally my fault I misinterpreted what the axis was doing. It's hitting middle when it gets there and then it goes to 100% on the other side. I was expecting the axis to be 0 to 100%. That's not how it's done here and it did confuse me. And that combined with this tutorial, I guess, made me think that it was doing some weird crap. Now, it is doing weird crap when you've got dual mixture controls because when I've got it like set like this then sim is trying to put it at zero mixture and a hundred percent mixture at the same time and that is causing conflicts uh, that definitely shouldn't be the case but it is at the moment so I think that is a bug but I'm going to say that very lightly but, you know I emphasize the fact that I think it's a bug I know that it's a Maybe it does that in all other sims. I'm going to have to go and look at x and see if it But I really don't see. If you've only got one engine, then the second engine here shouldn't control anything. It's just my opinion. agree with that or not. No. But when you're at high altitude, you do need to thin out the mixture. Now, one thing this, get, this initial simulator, this initial tutorial never tells you is that you need to have your mixture halfway down. If she'd just have mentioned that, I think uh, it would have helped me personally a lot. And I, I've got, you know, some significant experience in flight simulation. So that, that's, I mean, that just goes to highlight how easy something can be missed in an aircraft. Why we have checklists in aircraft that don't make these kind of mistakes. But that's the problem in this particular instance. I still don't understand why I'm struggling so much to get 25,000 RPM. I seem to be struggling to get more than 22,000 RPM. Maybe that is an altitude related thing. I don't know. I've never flown altitude. So I don't know exactly how that would behave. But I can, I can understand that if your mixture isn't trimmed properly or isn't thinned properly, then you, that would definitely negatively impact on your RPM. So with that being said, Flying in Sedona, you are going to have a uh, middle, f middle uh, mixture settings. That is actually correct because of the altitude. Very difficult to admit that. That's the truth of it. That is the truth. So I made a mistake there. But having to use both throttles and both mixture controls is definitely... Uh, at least we can fly now with it like this. So, uh, right, let's crack on. Let's go to tutorial number two. I'm going to have to... Uh, I'm going to get so much grief. It's a mistake. Here we go. Attitudes and instruments. Hoo-ha. Hoorah. Okay, so just to note that number five here is called a heading indicator, not a compass. The compass is the bit up here on the dashboard. It's, I think it's called a whiskey compass, something like that. Uh, and that will always give you true north, apparently, unless obviously you're in, uh, being affected. But um, a gyro drift, which is basically what your heading indicator uh, suffers from, basically compass and your heading indicator will not allow north is dead ahead of you then your heading indicator will occasionally 
go a bit wonky and you'll have to adjust that and that's something you have to do pretty much every single time you get into the aircraft um and i believe the reason for having the two is because the whiskey indicator is a hundred percent going to give you true north all the time except for the very rare occasion where it won't there are some certain areas where the, the magnetic north is um interrupted let's say and then you would rely on your other heading like, like the blue triangle i think it occurs there maybe so um actually i should fly the blue that would be right let's fly let's do this today we're talking about attitudes of flight how your plane is oriented relative to the horizon if you look outside, you can see the cockpit is just about four inches below the horizon line. We're flying straight with a decent rate of speed. This is the cruise attitude. Let's see how it reads on your instruments. Take a look at the attitude indicator. As the name implies, it shows your current attitude. The white line is the horizon with the sky above and the ground below. That orange element in the middle aligned with the horizon, that's your plane. Just like we saw outside, our current attitude reads pretty much straight and level. Okay, now let's see how much power the engine's generating. Check your tachometer. Looks like we're pushing around 2300 revolutions per minute. Combined, attitude and engine RPMs translate to aircraft performance. Which leads us to your airspeed indicator. Now, last but not least, check your altimeter. To figure out your altitude, you always want to read the small needle first. That's how many thousands of feet up you are. Then on to the big needle for the hundreds. So we're at 6,000 feet. With our current attitude and power output, we're holding a speed of 90 knots and a stable altitude of 6,000 feet. But that's about to change. Take the stick when you're ready. I think that was the prime opportunity to explain to about pitch. Oh, excuse me. I did that in the wrong order. Nice job. We're now set up with the same attitude and power we had at the top of our lesson. Next up is the descent attitude. Start by reducing your RPMs to 1800. Then drop the plane's nose a bit further below the horizon. Right to start rolling the plane. 
If you take a look outside, you can see how our attitudes changed. But you can also check your instruments for the details. As a general rule, We're dropping you slightly. Like keep your turns under 30 degrees. At the top of your attitude indicator, there's a series of notches representing 10 degrees each. Use them to control your roll. Notice the more you turn, the more you need to pull back on the yoke to maintain altitude. When you're rolling out, you'll need to do the opposite. Roll and push at the same time. The more you know about the main attitudes of flight, the closer you get to that pilot state of mind. So keep practicing, and whenever you're done, pass me the controls. Thanks, I've got control now. Well done. So that tutorial is really good, but I think that, again, that was the prime opportunity to highlight the fact that we're flying at altitude and that our mixture needs to be halfway. Because she's talking about RPM control in order to get your attitude right so that you can climb, descend and maintain. But she never once mentions that we're, we're flying at altitude so you need to have the mixture leaned out. I think that's a bit of a mistake. Um, I think a lot of people are going to struggle with that because, you know, if you know a little bit about flight simulation, instinctively you just go full mixture. You know, if you're an experienced pilot, you're probably not going to fall into that trap. But um, when you're following a tutorial, you kind of just do what you're told. Um, and if you aren't told to go halfway mixture because the altitude won't, I just I think they should have added that in. I think that's an important lesson that um unfortunately I have learned the hard way. Yeah. So other than that, other than the fact that it doesn't mention the altitude and needing to thin out the mixture, I think that tutorial's very good. So the thing to note when you come into an aircraft and you're doing these tutorials is first thing to look at I mean, we know we're at altitude, so we know we're gonna have thinned mixture. But take a look at the RPMs before you do anything, because then you can see what the sim is set up to. So for here, for example, my throttles are set to 75%, but in the in the tutorial, throttles are set at whatever they're set at, 50%, 80%, 90%, I have no idea whatsoever. So always take a look at the RPMs, and then you can adjust your throttle to match the RP or to get the RPMs back up. And that'll get you back on trim because we should start in a trimmed out state i imagine just a little tip there really so remember mixture uh, does depend heavily on altitude even when you're taking off and uh okay looks like we got stable fps oh take that back just wait for it to settle out there we go. There's an old saying I like. Oh God. A mile of road will take you a mile. A mile of runway will take you anywhere. Taking off isn't hard, but there are a few key points to remember. First, we always take off into the wind, which won't be an issue on a calm day like today. Second, before we enter a runway, we always make sure it's clear. Looks clear to me, but the game wants me to press S. Everything looks good, no cross traffic. Go ahead and taxi into position. Okay, so taxiing speed. The pedals should make steering the plane pretty easy. For taxiing speed, for constant taxiing speed, you want about 12,000 RPM. To get yourself rolling, you're probably going to want to pitch up to about 15 and then roll back to 12. And obviously, in order to actually move forward, you're going to have to reset the handbrake, which is down here. I've got that bound to a button. Take that off. And even at 12,000 RPM, we start rolling, but you just... Give yourself that initial start. It wants us to stop on the numbers. So we'll bring the... Uh... Ugh! Let's do this. Apply full power and I'll walk you through the takeoff as we go. 
Okay, so my feet are both on the brake pedals, maximum throttle, mixture set to about halfway. Once the RPM comes up, we're only getting, what, 22,000 RPM, 23,000 RPM, which is supposed to be cruise, but there you go. I guess at altitude, that isn't an option. Use your rudders to stay on the center line and keep pushing power until you reach 55 knots. The uh, speed indicator, top left hand icon when it hits 55. Good. Pull now back very back simply. Line up the top of your instrument panel so it's a couple inches above the horizon. That'll pitch us up and set a good climb attitude. Let's fly. Use your rudders to keep the runway heading of 210 degrees. Maintain 75 knots and we'll reach our target altitude of 5,500 feet in no time. A little bit skew whiff coming off the runway there. Holding your heading is not that easy. So I'm just using a small amount of trim just to maintain that 75 uh, uh, 5, feet. miles per hour. Or not, whatever it is. So, bring the nose down, very gentle movements. We're in a cruise attitude, pushing max power. To stay level at our target altitude, let's start by easing the throttle back to 1800 RPMs. So you're going to have to pull back on the yoke to keep the nose up. And, uh... There we to go. Maintain altitude, just keep dropping throttle. You could just keep pulling on the yoke to hold steady, but that's not really a precise means of control. Probably better to adjust your trim wheel until you don't need to push or pull on the yoke. Drag the trim down when you need to set the nose up. Drag it up to set the nose down. Try adding trim to keep us at 5,500 feet without increasing throttle. If you feel our pitch slipping and need to get back to the proper attitude, don't worry. Just pull on the yoke, then dial in the right trim. The way I was taught, when you adjust the trim, you make rough changes at first to remove pressure on the yoke, then small adjustments to find the perfect setting to keep your desired attitude. That's the key to straight and level flight. It saves you from constantly pushing or pulling on the yoke. And that gives you more time to enjoy the ride. If you want more practice using the trim, go for it. Whenever you're ready to pass the controls, I'll be here. That's it. Okay, I have control. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. So there we go. Um, pretty easy stuff, really. I mean, very, very gentle movement. That's, that's the key. Nothing too drastic. Don't reduce or increase the throttle too quickly uh don't yank on the yoke too quickly anything like that is just going to cause significant problems now the the pitch sensitivity i still think is a bit wrong but you know i'm going to have to spend some time really working on that and working with the sensitivity settings and see if i can't get it to feel a bit smoother just play about with it i guess is the key Chris Merriman, thank you so much for the sub. I really appreciate it. Part of um, what I'm doing today is trying to get my settings set up so that I can actually do some streams. I'd like to increase the, the quality level. It seems that the menus and the, in, the initial loading screen uh, is where I suffer the most FPS drop, and that causes the video to stutter. Once I'm actually flying, on the most part at least it seems really good like you can see a bit of stutter in the video there i don't know so 
um, FPS is back up to 83, so we should be good to go. Fly. Go, oh, Tengia. Tengland. Ten Thank the you so much. she speaking now you'll need to add flaps to increase your rate of descent but you'll also need to push forward and trim to change your attitude and maintain the same speed the way the way that she's st speaking there the last time I did this it made me think that she was telling me to add power and then to add flaps um, but she's not she's explaining what the situation is before you get there I don't think that's very well done uh, because it, it confused the hell out of me, that's for sure. But basically what she's saying is that you should be coming almost straight down at it. If you're... See, we're, the nose just above it. we're way too high. And our speed is way too high. We're now, too high to land. So she's going to cancel us. SOP dictates we go around and try our approach again. Don't worry. You'll get it with practice. Again, the, the yoke control, the um, pitch controls are horrible. But um, what she didn't do throughout the whole tutorial is explain what we were supposed to be doing. So... In order to maintain the speed whilst you're pitching your nose down, you're going to have to adjust the throttle. Now, bearing in mind that these tutorials are meant to be for complete beginners, there's not enough information in here. So I'll try and fill in the gaps as best as I can. I'm going to go full power if it off. Looks like the numbers moving down in your windscreen. Well, then you're too high. If you look at the tachometer. We're like 12,000 RPM right now. Descent, but you'll also need to push forward and trim to change your attitude and maintain the same speed. We're not maintaining 65. So basically, in order to get 65, I'm having to lift the nose up to slow the aircraft down. And that is making us really high. So I'm going to have to add flaps. Flaps allow you to drop uh, more acutely. Now, whether or not we're going to drop in time to, uh, to get on the runway is another thing here. You can see now I'm going to put the nose down a lot more. 
while still maintaining round about 65. I kind of feel like I'm going to need to make a tutorial to explain to people how to land properly. She's going to say we're too high again. We're too high to land. God damn it. SOP dictates we go around and try our approach again. Don't worry, you'll get it with practice. See, this is the, the problem I have with the tutorials. It takes her so long to say something and she doesn't of the important things that you need to learn in order to understand how to do this. So, I'll say what we're going to do. So we'll come into the aircraft, while she's blabbering on about whatever it is she's blabbering on. We'll start heading towards the runway immediately. We'll get nose down, we'll, we'll go complete idle, so we'll power off, and we'll go into a descent glide. Now, based on whether we're too high or too low on that, I'll add, we've got three layer, three levels of flaps. I'll add the flaps one at a time so that we get um, a more, or a faster descent. I hope that makes sense. So if we're flying along like so, we pitch down, we, we're on that angle there. But if we put the flaps down, we'll be more, we'll drop quicker. And the more flaps we have, the quicker we'll drop. But we'll also, be able to nose down more basically we'll be able to nose down more but fly slower that's that's basically what right so i'm going to set up 50 percent throttle 50 percent mixture ignore what she's saying and just immediately try and land the aircraft because you, if you listen to her for instruction by the time she's finished talking it's already too late you know What they should have done is start us further out. <laughs> start us further out and fully trimmed. Because this is a beginner's My tutorial. Used to say the best part of Power off. Is landing in one piece. The man was a terminal pessimist, but he wasn't wrong. Today, you're in charge of bringing us in for a safe landing. We've got clearance for a straight-in approach, so we don't have to complete the standard traffic pattern. And I've already set us up in landing configuration at 65 knots with 10 degrees of flaps and idle power. We're on the glide slope now. Maintain speed around 65 knots. Change your pitch if you need to and keep your aim point on the runway number. When you're targeting the runway number, you want to keep it steady in your sights. If so it looks like the number is moving up in your windscreen, you're coming in low. You'll need to add a bit more throttle to get back on the slope. If it looks like the number's moving down in your windscreen, well, then you're too high. You'll need to add flaps to increase your rate of descent, but you'll also need to push forward and trim to change your attitude and maintain the same speed. Right. So all of that chitty chat, chit chat, chit chat stuff I immediately powered off and started to nose down. Now I haven't quite got 65 knots. Although I feel like I've got 65 knots. Maybe I'm not aligned with the runway particularly well. But what I'm looking at here mostly are the pappy lights. That's the four little white lights that are to the left. Now they're telling me that I'm too high. I'm going to add one notch of flaps. That's going to allow us to slow down. And... Uh, that means we have to nose down more, so we're Keep aiming... Your point on the runway threshold. When you're 10 feet above the runway, it's time to flare. Once we pass the threshold, shift your aim point to the end of the runway. Then, pull back slightly on the yoke to aim the nose just above it. So I'm still high, according to the Pappy lights. But we're well under 65, even though I was doing 50 when it finally gave me the green checkered okay, we're past flag. The threshold. Start the flare. Keep pulling back slowly. Let the plane settle onto the runway. 
Don't push it down, but don't let it start climbing. That's that wasn't a, a bad nice. landing on my point. Now That's a pitch the issue. To slow us down and bring the plane to a stop. The brakes on this aircraft are awful. So again, um, for uh, taxiing speed, you're looking at about ten to twelve thousand. Make sure there's nothing on the uh, taxiway here. And uh, I'm not sure if this is a helipad. It looks a little bit like a helipad. I'm going to park there anyway. Great job. As they say, any landing you can walk away from is a good landing. But if you can use the plane the next day, it's outstanding. Landings Indeed. can be hard, even for seasoned pilots. Trust me, don't hesitate to practice. After all, that's what we're here for, right? Certainly is. So, um, yeah. I think the tutorials are a good try. Complete beginners, I just don't feel like they give enough information and they prattle on for too long, which then puts you in a position where you're going to have to drop so quickly to get, to get down. This is really about the extent of my flying capability or capacity. This, this is a brilliant way to learn how to use an aircraft. What you'll find is that over time you'll learn RPM. So you'll, you'll learn where to put the RPM in order to perform an action. And you'll see angles and distances and you'll, you'll realise now is the time I need to start descending for the runway. It'll all become second nature to you, but as soon as you get into a new aircraft, probably everything is going to be different. It'll all change. But then you've got to relearn everything. So the 152 is brilliant. It's a very forgiving aircraft. It's, you know, you can chuck it around. Brilliant for training. Um, but once you start moving up, then everything you've learnt here is just a base for what you've now got to learn. So one of my favourite aircraft is the Cessna Caravan. Swapping from this to a Cessna Caravan isn't a massive step, but everything changes. The power options that you have are completely different. The, um, the RPMs will be different for ascent, for cruise flight. Everything changes. Okay, so we've got to be a thousand feet above the runway, and we're already at 4,800 feet. So a thousand feet above this, you've guessed it, is 5,800 feet. If she doesn't tell you that, I, I don't know how she expects complete newbies to know that, but that's what we're going to be doing. And I, you kind of have to fill in the gaps yourself, which if you're completely new to flight simulation or flying in general, I'm not quite sure how you're going to manage to do that. Okay. Good airspeed, 40. 50, pull back. Trying to maintain a, a heading of 21. Trying to get a, a pitch speed of 75. When we're up, keep us aligned with the runway and climb to 5,400 feet. We're going for a left-hand traffic pattern. Looking pretty good. Tiny bit of trim there, just a alleviate the yoke 
even when you're trimmed you're still gonna have to uh still gonna have to adjust it ever so slightly Still trying to get to 5,800, so we're a little bit low at the moment. So you want to be perpendicular to the runway, which we kind of are now. And just about... We've got the wind at our back there. now. We're on the right track. Just about... is looking very and good. It probably goes without saying, always watch out for other planes entering or exiting the pattern. Duck ins or Ines, thank you so much here. for the sub. Keep going until you see it at a 45 degree angle behind you. That's your cue to turn left again onto the base leg. So as you add flaps, the aircraft will pitch up uh, and then it will nose down and then it will kind of balance itself out. You can just give a small amount of yoke input backwards and forwards just to control that a smidge and um, you should be able to get a nice stable flight then. So there's the airport, it's like 90 degrees, we want it to be more like 45 degrees and then we'll turn in on it. Um, we've already got one notch of flaps. So, again, we're looking for about 65 on the descent. Which basically means we're going to bring the, the throttle down to 18 RPM. And then nose down to about 65 knots. So, I'm a bit late in the turn, right. I think. Reduce power to idle to start losing altitude and maintain cruise attitude. Now she wants me to go idle. Keep That's... sure I'd go idle at this point but that's what she wants us to do I feel like I'm gonna drop out the sky I'm, I'm not gonna make the runway with her current recommendation so I'm gonna ignore her there we go. and go the to 1800 RPM make sure to keep the plane centered on approach if you're too high add flaps too low add power to maintain the glide path Okay, so now I feel like we're on the glide path. We're a little bit slow. That's okay, we've got lots of space and time to play with here. I get a nice landing this time. There's a bit of an early flare. Get the nose up. Bit of low flight. It's a nice, gentle, nice, gentle landing. RPMs. Landing. Now just apply the brakes to slow your roll. And make sure you don't stop on the runway, of course. RPMs about twelve hundred. Planes are looking to land, we've got to move. Take one of the taxiways on the right. Again, the brakes on this thing are absolutely awful. Good job. As an old instructor said to me, not only did you not die, you're really learning to fly. So there we go. 
I don't know. I just feel like you can't listen to this instructor completely because this instructor will kind of sell you down the the path a little bit. She'll get you into problems if you do exactly what she says. Sometimes that's not suitable for your situation. Like there, you saw me put a bit of extra power on, but you know, by the time she said, if you feel like you're too low, you can put extra power on. I think I'd have been in the ground. Um, I just, I just think everything takes too long in these tutorials. I understand that they're trying to do it at a nice casual pace, but maybe take out the chitter chatter in between so that you've got more time to think about what you're about to do. It's just how I feel about these tutorials at the moment. I'm interested how you, how you feel about it. If you're a pilot and you've done these, how do you find them? And if you're completely new to Flight Simulator, how do you find them? Because that's what these are intended for. These are great refreshers for people like me who already know how to fly, but, you know, my procedures are rusty, let's say. But for a completely... Somebody completely new to flight simulation, I don't think this is going to help you all that much. I mean, it will over time, but you'll have to learn how to fly and then come back and do these. That's how I think this is going to happen. Which is not ideal. Is, it, is that ideal? I don't think that's ideal. Hi, Karan. Wait for the FPS to return to something normal. Right, there we go. Stable FPS, alrighty. It's time, your first solo flight. I'll be watching from the ground in radio contact if you need me, but something tells me you won't. Your goal is to complete Sedona's left-hand traffic pattern on your own. Remember what we covered in our previous sessions, and you'll be just fine. Good luck. See you on the other side. This might be an easier way to explain to you what I'm doing. 50% throttle, or thereabouts. And off we go. So we've only got 21,000 RPM, which isn't a lot. But maybe the, uh, the overall RPM will be significantly affected by the altitude. Pull back at 50. Try and get that nice climb whilst maintaining 21. A little bit of left hand rudder. Just, just to counteract what I think is wind blowing us slightly to the right. We're doing about 70,000. Coming up to 54,000. 
Or 5,400 feet, rather. Trying to talk and fly at the same time is a little tricky. We're a little bit slow. But I'm only climbing at 500 feet. I don't think I can get much more out of this aircraft. Right. Slightly before 5,400 feet, but that's okay. So start rolling out of your turn just before you get to 1,200. And that was a terrible turn. Airport's to my left, which is about where I want her. Still trying to climb to get to 5,800 feet. The, air, uh, the runway is sort of halfway down my wing, which is where I want to turn for the base leg. Once we're perpendicular to the runway, we'll straighten up. So there is round about 5,800 feet. But we'll get four inches below the horizon and try and get this plane stabilised. Need to bring down the RPMs now. The RPMs have gone up, you see, higher in the air. Uh, we're a bit high, actually. So, 18,000 RPM, 5,800 feet, just a little bit of back required on the trim, a smidge more than that. That should be us round about level flight. 90 degrees, going to wait until it's 45 behind us and then we're going to turn in. Yeah, this time I'm actually going to pay attention. A little bit higher trim. Something like that looks good. Base leg. be on 30 degrees which I'm slightly off and now we're going to go final approach and this time we'll do a complete power off oh we're so high I should have powered off earlier I'm going to go full flaps complete power off will allow us to descend at quite significant pace hopefully I can pull this back Technically, this is a, a go-around. I'm going to make it work. We're going to land very much in the middle of the runway. We've got lots of runway to play with. Going very fast. This is a Cessna, so we can rectify this very easily. Very poor. The rest of it was quite good. This bit was very poor. Who's up? Hoping there's another off ramp here. Yes, there is just here. Lucky me. So I recovered it, but my mistake there. There's always room for improvement. That's life, right? Yeah. But you did it all on your own. Woo. You're on your way to becoming one hell of a pilot. Thank you very much. So what I did wrong there was I I didn't power off on the on the. Uh, before the final, which meant I was still too high. There you go, I've learnt a lesson, but that's the good thing about flight simulation, is um, you, you realise where your mistakes are and then you, you learn from them and then next time you should be better. So, a very humble tutorial from me, Peter Mason, thank you so much for the sub. A very humble um, tutorial from me here because, yeah, because of the mistakes that I made recently. But hopefully I've, I've highlighted those, I've taught you something, I've explained how it is. 
Uh, I will be making a full review on this game, but obviously I've, I've got a lot more to look at, a lot more to learn, a lot more to understand before I'm ready to make that review. But um, I'm glad, I'm glad I finally figured out what was going on there. Um, there is this double throttle issue still to um, be addressed, but uh, other than that, I think um, it's definitely playable put it that way but the tutorials just they seem too slow and they're lacking some really important information the next one is navigation navigation is really quite a tricky thing um, I'm very rusty on my navigation I've been avoiding it like the plague if I'm being honest in the last few months so I definitely need to get on and do a practice with that before I record a video so that I can possibly help but anyway thank you guys so much for watching I really appreciate it it um, it's very much a learning process uh, I think they say a good pilot is a pilot who's always learning or something like that. If you think you know everything, then then you're not a good pilot. If you think you know everything, then you're probably going to... Because you'll make a mistake and you won't know how to resolve it. If you're open to making mistakes and learning from your mistakes, then you should eventually be... So thanks for watching, guys. Take care of yourselves. Till next time.